Well, it is uh, 22 hours and 54 minutes into the 19th day of March 2021. It is a Friday, and we are doing our usual uh, routine. We are doing the YouTube stroll. We are at fa Family Nest. We start off, we typically start off with uh, uh, the Yowie Vlogs, move to uh, It's Our Life if they have anything. Uh, sometimes they don't. Then to the Leroy's. Leroy's had something today. Uh, it's Our Life didn't have anything today. And then I hopped on over from the Leroy's to Our Family Nest. And Our Family Nest has two uh, vlogs up that I'm going to watch. Uh, and then it's on to uh, uh, Family Five Vlogs. Uh, and a lot gets done uh, while, I'm while I'm watching my YouTube show. That this is a fully functional research desk. So I got my editing done. Um, well, I'm partially done anyways. Uh, I have some publishing to do. Uh, had myself something to eat. Uh, we're now in sort of the uh, uh, the fasting mode. It's going to be for until basically around May first, the first week of May is when it ends. And uh, it's mostly grains, mostly grains, uh, milk, uh, because I need it for my eyesight. Because the amount of times I use my eyes, I, I, it's required. Um, uh, water. I have a glass of water now. And is what happens is that uh, you eat more. I'm eating less at one time, but with uh, this type of uh, of of uh, food, because they don't you don't have much nutrients uh, to begin with. So there's not you, you. I'm eating less, so I have to eat more often. So that's what it is. That's how I'm going to. I eat less at a time. But I have uh, food more often, uh, so so Madeline instead of instead of having three meals, three good sized meals, I'll have four or five smaller meals, and that covers you throughout the day. Uh, whenever my day is right now, my day seems to be uh, I got up around eight o'clock in the evening, uh, did uh, my prayer meditation, and then from the prayer meditation. I did my gaming, came back here, began the YouTube stroll, had something to eat, uh, and now I'm uh, sort of taking a bit of a break. I need to sort of clean things up a little bit in the kitchen, and then I'll move on. I'm moving on to uh, uh, our family nest right now, and so I thought, hey, this is the perfect time to vlog right before the end of the day <laughs> on the 19th of March. So. Uh, see you in the next segment. Well, with uh, two hours and 38 minutes into the day of Sunday, March 21st, I think this is a fitting beginning. Uh, I will be in about a half hour filming the uh, first episode of uh, Meditations. We have finally gotten to the point. We have cleared off, have cleared, we have cleared off enough uh, material off the phones. We've got the load balance in terms of on the, on the editing desk. Uh, that we can actually move forward with, um, uh, with the, with the meditations project. We can start talking, we can start filming the episode, which will be out on a weekly basis. It's not going to be daily, it's going to be weekly. And it'll be about a half hour episode that will get into, uh, the area of gnosis, uh, what we have going up on Instagram right now, uh, in the, uh, Meta Sophia, Meta Sophia Philos, um, is the notes from Gnosis. This will be, uh, sort of the, uh, culmination of the notes. This is, uh, these will be essays produced from the notes. Uh, there will be some of the stuff that's not actually in the notes because I do have mental notes rather than just simply, uh, stuff that I've said. I've also have stuff that I've written out. Uh, there are a number of places uh, where the notes exist that uh, they're not all together in one place. So if you go look for them, ask, well, where all where is everything? Well, it's here, there, and kind of everywhere. Uh, I know how to put the things together, but uh, other people, if you're initially looking at it, will not know how to put the get put the uh, basically put the puzzle together. I know where the pieces are. I know what the piece how the pieces connect. Uh, I also understand that there is other connections. There are other connections that are possible. 
So I leave that door open as well. No is, is is a very odd thing because uh, it is a puzzle. And because people think that Gnosis is limited, particularly to magic, they're very guarded about what information they let out. But Gnosis simply means knowledge. And because of the way Gnosis has evolved, it's the knowledge above standard knowledge. It's called meta-knowledge. Meta-knowledge is the knowledge beyond knowledge. Uh, one may say, oh, that's mythology. But if you start looking at it in terms of metaphysics, and this is the work based off of Planck, and of course going into uh, Linus Pauling, uh, that gives you a better connection into this. Uh, one begins to sort of... Excuse me. Put an upper limit in terms of what we actually know. In other words, we don't actually know everything. There isn't a finite endpoint to our knowledge. There's, you know, let's say we start where we're beginning at knowledge when we're babies with nothing, and we typically think that there's an endpoint somewhere uh, beyond uh, graduate school after your PhD, that there is a sort of a finite knowledge. But the reality is that there isn't a finite knowledge. And this is what the meta knowledge talks about. Meta knowledge goes beyond that. And science tends, had tended to dismiss it in this back at Planck, where you now had the disconnect between uh, what we call the classical scientists or the, determin the, 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 de the determinist who believed that the universe was finite, that you could determine things uh, with uh, uh, basically, basically calling them facts. And then you had the scientists, the quantum, quantum scientists, who said, no, you can't do that. The, the universe is probabilistic. Well, that didn't sit well with a lot of scientists. So there was a split. The standard universities didn't want to give up their grounds as masters and, and, and theologians and philosophers. They didn't want to give up their status. So they kind of pushed aside, they took the different things that they could easily present from quantum mechanics and, you know, and some of these, the, the we we'll call the, the, the explorations into the unknown, into the, the world, the probabilistic universe, and made it appear and present it as a deterministic universe. In other words, they maintain the classical by bringing some of the uh, ideas and some of the concepts forward that they had sort of developed or seen develop uh, within their own systems. But the reality was, and, instead, and this was done to protect themselves, uh, to keep uh, the universe as uh, ultimate masters of knowledge, the warehouse of knowledge, the storage of knowledge, and they wanted to keep it contained. So, of course, they didn't want to let all this other stuff out, so they hid it. They scattered it around. The problem is, is that for people like myself and for people who were basically lab rats and, 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 and library rats. We live in the library. We live in the lab. And we're there for exploration. So we will stumble across things. We don't necessarily intend to find these different things. This is, we don't go out with, oh, I'm going to see that over there. Or I'm going to find this over there. We're sort of walking around. And we pick this up, we pick that up. And we build our own library with our experiences and, our, and, and the different places we go. Uh, our different knowledge that we pick up, uh, that becomes our library. And as the library develops, you begin to, you begin to see, because you do some organization with the library, how what goes with what, and where, you know, how does the library, how do you present your library? Where do you put certain books? Where do you put certain ideas? Where do you put, put, where do you put certain knowledge? And this is the organization of the library. And the thing is, is that the library is a very complex thing because how you how you organize your, your library often determines or, or presents where your knowledge is. And libraries with the Dewey Decimal System and all these sort of complex mathematics systems in terms of cataloging are very precise, very, um, well, deterministic. They, they say there is no room for other, other alternatives. But this is, this is this is where Planck and now Linus Pauling come into conflict with the main system. It's they said, hey, no, there's stuff outside the system. There's stuff 
outside of what we call standard knowledge. And this formed the meta-knowledge. This became uh, the Gnosis. And ironically enough, there were a number of people within higher education, within academia, who understood this. And their purpose for hiding the meta-knowledge was because they didn't want other people to find it. They wanted to keep the information for themselves. And now, in other words, they found a pot of gold, they found their gold, and they're not going to share it. They're not going to give it to other people. And this was sort of the, the creation of two different worlds. One world that was seen by the public, and one world that was completely private. And you can get into all of this with uh, Edward Bernays. You can get into this with uh, Sigmund Freud, Master Path. If you, want, if you want to understand the hidden world, the hidden world of knowledge, uh, you have to get into Freud. You have to get into, particularly his connection with Edward Bernays and his sister Anna Freud. Uh, those are the three three components that you want to take a look at. Uh, then you want to come into Timothy Leary and then uh, Ram Das in the 1960s and see how one one compares to the other. And how the eras shift, and a large chunk of what we see today comes out of the era of, of Timothy Leary on the surface. Timothy Leary is basically on the surface, uh, and the same thing with uh, Carl Jung; he's on the surface as well. Uh, but his thing sort of gets into a little deeper stuff because he gets off into uh, uh, into Linus Pauling uh, because Pauling was a patient of his. And brings out certain things that Freud would have never brought out. But he doesn't go that far into sort of uh, rebuffing the standard knowledge and saying that there is knowledge beyond. He just simply sort of stops it at that point, keeps his position as, as, a, uh, as a psychologist and, and leaves, it, leaves it for the researcher, the study, or whoever is studying that to sort of take it forward if they have seeing the other things. It depends on what you see, what you experience. That will sort of determine the path you end up going down. And this is it is something that is very complex and it's not that well understood. And I guess this is the opening of not of, of the uh, of the show. No, I don't know if we have to film an opening because uh, as long as it's about nine ten minutes, and that's what we're doing now. We're about nine ten minutes into this, and uh. So this will suffice as the, uh, in, in, in addition to being a segment of uh, our life as uh, Cyborg Alpha, this is the uh, first segment, the first clip of uh, meditations, because meditation gets into the, it shows you the opening path, and it is viewed as a path, it is sort of, in many ways, experienced as a path, because uh, you're walking along things, again, and with the walking, the path aspect, is because you don't necessarily know where you're going. This is the whole thing. Is There is a journey there because you don't know where you're going. You don't know what's going to be next. And this is what causes a large chunk of the problem. Anyways, uh... It is uh, 1046, 10 hours and 46 minutes into the 22nd day of March, uh, 2021. It is a Monday. I am still recovering from the week, uh, from the weekend's all-nighter. I'm still in bed. I had gotten up earlier to game. Uh, I'm going to get up now to do some gaming and to uh, have something to eat and then come back to bed again. My body is exhausted. I'm having problems with my neurological disorder. And that keeps me in bed longer than I should be in bed. But uh, what are you going to do about it? It's been a pretty good weekend. Uh, I did film the first episode of uh, Meditations. That will be going out next weekend. I'd like to be uh, 
at least a week ahead on my episodes. So, I've done that. I'm going to edit the, uh, and create the opening sequence. And I have an ending one that I should be able to put together as well. Uh, it's from what I had, had done before, so uh, it's not going to be anything necessarily new. So things are actually starting to roll along. They're starting to improve. Uh, this is on here, if people wonder what this is. This is my eye shield. Uh, I have uh, eye, uh, light sensitivity in my eye to keep my eyes healthy. Uh, rather than using a flat mask, I use it curved. And that's what this does. It's a curved mask. It's basically rather than buying a curved mask for a lot of money. It's, it's easy to just to go get a bra. Excuse me. At a discount place. And use that as a, 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 a... If you turn it upside down, you can use it as an eye mask. It does the job it needs to do. And, well... It only cost well. It only cost me three dollars. <laughs> so uh, I do things cheaply around here, you know, inexpensively. As long as it functions and does the job, then that's what we're looking for. So I said we are vlogging in more places. Things are starting to come together uh, in terms of well, this is my next research. This is my research desk. I've been awake now for about a uh, half hour, 45 minutes, uh, mulling over some of the dreams I've been having. Uh, I am moving ahead uh, in my dream. But it still remains to be, it's still the fact that I am sort of on the path and not necessarily. Uh, uh, major marker points, even though getting up meditations is a major marker point. Uh, the feelings uh, of, I don't know, I guess it's just, it's, it, the only way to describe it is go back to the school feeling. It's not Christmas, you've passed Christmas, so you've got, you're not on the Christmas break anymore. You're doing okay in school. Could be better. Could be worse. And you're moving towards the next vacation. In this case, it would be Easter or something like that. And the feeling is basically the same. It's, it, it doesn't feel much different than... I said being in middle school for the rest of my life is, uh, uh, I am dealing with one of my issues, my, uh, my physical, well, physiological issues, my, uh, my atonic, my atonic dystrophy, it affects, uh, the lower part of my body from the intestines of what people call a stomach on down, including my legs and my feet. My dad has it. And my niece has it. My brother has it. Uh, but it's in his arms. He is, he, there are certain things he can't grip. He can't uh, uh, hold in his head because the uh, muscles will go into spasm. And he won't be able to loosen his grip without having someone pull his fingers apart. So you, cl you cl clench your fist. What happens is his uh, muscles get, get stuck. And someone has to physically open the, the hand uh, and release the muscle in order for the, the grip to release. And so there's, these are some of the issues that uh, we have. It's genetic, it's passed in the family. And my niece Claire got it pretty bad. <laughs> she got uh, hit uh, with a double dose of what we have. She's got upper body and lower body issues. Uh, and what happens is that when the hitches really do hit, it, you have to, the only, only option is to go to bed and allow the sort of the, the convalescing, the, uh, the sleeping to uh, 
that's when the body repairs itself. The body repairs itself when it's asleep. And so sleep is what sort of your body needs at this time. And so you allow yourself to do that. Although for myself right now, I do have to get up because, uh, uh, I have to reset my schedules for certain things, and this is how I'll end up resetting my schedule. But today, usually the day after the all-nighter is, is almost a complete write-off. Uh, things will get done, but not at the pace one would expect, even though things aren't getting, are getting better. I am being more productive. And, uh, I am improving on the, uh, phone situation in terms of the portable office. I probably will film, uh, either sometime next week my portable office and show you what it is and how I put it together, and it allows me to bring the filming, the research desk, wherever I am, and uh, so I can get work done even on the weekends and times where you're sitting around and doing nothing, I can do some extra work and get things done. <clears throat> Holding it with the wrong hand, and it's time to say goodbye, and I'll see you uh, in the next segment.